Struggling to move your nonprofit forward? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the Nonprofit Architect, where we are giving you the actionable steps you need to launch and grow your nonprofit organization. Now, here's your host, Travis Johnson. Well, fine. I guess we'll just jump right in. This is Travis Johnson. I'm here with the Nonprofit Architect, helping you build a stronger nonprofit. Jump over to my other link at patreon.com slash nonprofit architect. Throw in five, ten. Hey, I'll even take a hundred bucks a month. We're putting sweet behind the scenes videos of first interviews that I do with people just like Juliana. Juliana, how are you today? I'm amazing. Thank you for asking. How are yeah, you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. Got uh, got some wins over the weekend, got some naps in. Both things make me very happy, and I'm excited to hear about the Latinx life. Perfect. Let's get to it. What do you want to know? I mean, we are a Latinx run company. We were founded by six Latinas. We just graduated from university, so we really wanted to help our community, which is North Carolina. And the best way for us to help was to found a nonprofit, and that's what we did. We do different workshops for the youth of North Carolina, not just Latinx, but everybody who's interested in driving in further education, in a healthy lifestyle, in a healthy mental state. We all come from various different, um, I guess, strengths. We all have different, I don't know how to say it. I guess we all are interested in different things. Like I was a psychology major. There were kinesiology majors, teachers. So we all have different things that we really want to educate the people on. And that's what we're doing. That's that's really cool. And so the Latinx Life, you guys get sponsors on board to give away scholarships. Is that correct? We do. We give out a scholarship, and that is for the Latinx community only. It is for uh, Latinx junior or senior in the university. Um, as long as you are smart and dedicated, we will give you a scholarship regardless of your citizenship status. That's pretty cool. It's, it's great. You can get a group of people together uh, and pretty much do whatever you want in this country, right? Whether it's helping the Latinx community, whether it's helping people getting out of prison, whether it's helping rescue animals on the side of the road, you can get a group of people together in this country and have an impact on whomever you want. That's one of the the biggest things I love about America is if you have an idea and people agree with you, you can start moving forward an idea. Uh, And I just love what you're doing there in North Carolina. Yeah, thank you. I mean, if you have a voice and you have a strong enough voice, you should help other people that don't have the, no- the voice to defend themselves. So how do you six ladies go around collecting money to give away to other people? We really hustle. We started from scratch. We didn't know how to run a nonprofit. So obviously we didn't know how to ask for sponsorships. Uh, we had to learn that from zero. We started going to local businesses face-to-face, talking to the people, our community. Uh, we also applied online to the major communities, uh, the major companies, I mean, which they're so easy because they have a request form already set up for us. So that's that just makes it a lot easier for us. Um, we also just really made sure that we had really good connections from university. People that graduated with us, they started working with companies that give money to nonprofits. They give out grants and they know what we're running. They believe in our reason and they are instantly messaging us like, hey, do you guys need money? My company has a grant that you guys should apply for. So it really is like from all sides we're pulling in. <laughs> that is just wonderful. And I don't, I don't think every other nonprofit agrees with you that just money coming in from all these areas. So you actually go to businesses. Do you guys go to like networking groups and other meetings like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thankfully, uh, our university, they give out like different events for us to network with people in different businesses. We met a lady from Volvo, which is a really major company in North Carolina that we apply for a sponsorship. So fingers crossed for them. But is we're just networking with people, letting them know that we're out here, asking them like, what do they do? And just trying to get mentorship as well as sponsorships. So you're not just asking for money? No. In some cases, uh, we do ask for mentorship. I think the other other nonprofits need to hear that. I had a a conversation. I was probably a couple weeks ago. uh, There's a young lady getting out of the Navy. And she's like, I've seen some of your stuff online. I know some of the stuff that you're doing. I was like, I'd like to have a, a sit down and talk about some of this stuff. And I was like, sure, why not? I got nothing going on that day. I know I just showed you my calendar, but I actually had some open time. Um, 
we sat down and we got to this topic of networking. She's like, what the heck is even networking? What does it even mean? Right. So like networking to me is you're going around, you're introducing yourself, you're saying what I do. And then immediately the rest of the focus of the conversation is on them, who they are, what they do, and then how you can provide value to what it is that they're trying to do. Is that your experience as well? Yeah. I I mean, like I actually met a lady, she runs a nonprofit. Uh, We got lunch. She's such a sweetheart and she's been running this nonprofit for years. She does workshops, financial workshops. And that's something that we want to do eventually. We have a series of workshops that they come in different subjects just to help the youth success in life, basically. And think, how do you do it? Like, please help me to become as successful as you are. And she was so happy to tell me. She's like, this is the games that I play. She showed me some of like her personalized games. And it's just sharing. Like, there's enough people for us to help. Why can't we all help them? It makes no sense. But just network, network, talk talk to people. You always meet somebody that you can learn something from. Mm -hmm. There's something you take away from each and every conversation. Sometimes the thing that you take away is how not to do it. And that's okay sometimes to learn how not to do it so you can avoid doing it in the future and be like, you know what? We had that conversation with so-and-so and and I really don't think we're ever going to do it that way. And that's okay too. Yeah. What I really like about networking is that you don't have to solve everyone's problems. You can just be there and listen and show support and show that you care. And then somewhere down the road, who knows how long it's going to be. It could be next week or, or next year something comes up that you can help them out with or something comes up that you need help. And you're like, Hey team, Hey network, I am struggling in this area. Who's got the solution. Who's got a suggestion. Who's got a a contact that I can introduce me to. And before you know it, answers are coming out of the woodwork. People are glad to help because you're not just there with the ask up front. And it's so wonderful that that's how it builds that way. Now, when I talk to my clients, I recommend that they go out and meet all their neighbors and all the surrounding areas and try to go to as many events as possible. And if you can, get up on stage and talk about what it is that you do. Is that something you guys have tried to do with Latinx Life? Yeah, we try to come out to like every event that we can, especially now that we're picking up more contacts. They're saying, oh, we have this event coming up. Would you guys like to come and join us? We're like, yes, yes to every event. Somebody will be available. There are six of us, somebody will do it. So yeah, as long as they invite us, we're happy to show and show people our mission and why it's but it's it's always nice just to have somebody to lean on like if you do like you said if you have a problem and somebody might know the answer it could be the person that you least suspect it could be like somebody's grandma like oh yeah she has this person it's like wow okay i didn't expect that from you but please thank you so much (laughs) i think back to the first time that i went to a quote-unquote networking event i just knew that i wanted to give back to the community and and finally get involved. So I went to this event and I didn't know anything other than that I wanted to give, that I wanted to be part of the community, do something well. And I was going there to meet Grady. I never met Grady. I never seen Grady. And I went to this place I had never been in a room full of people I had never known. And I sat next down to a woman called Miss Patty. She's like, hi, Miss Patty. Everyone calls me Miss Patty. You can call me Miss Patty. And we sat down and we just connected and we just talked and talked and talked and come to discover, come to find out Grady, the guy I was supposed to meet was sitting across the table the whole time and he knew everyone in the room except me. So he assumed it was me, but he just let me go on and have my conversation for I have no idea how long it was. Yeah. And then she's like, who are you here to meet, babe? You know, honey, honey, darling, yeah. honey, dumpling. She's such a sweet Southern lady. Oh, he's like, I'm here to meet. Uh, Grady Grandstaff. Yeah. Well, he's right here, right across the table. <laughs> and oh, I can't remember what I was feeling at that moment. I'm sure it wasn't joy. Um, <laughs> but that's how it starts. You just you show up, you do good things, you be a good person, you have good conversation, and before you know it, things are happening for you. Yeah. Things things are always moving. People are always willing, and you know the really. The people that get it, the people that get networking, they really are willing always to lend out a hand and just help you out as much as they can. There's enough to go around. There's almost 8 billion people on the planet. There's so many different communities, so many different events, so many people that care about different things. And you don't have to 
hoard. You don't have to backstab. You don't have to do any of those things. Exactly. You can just go be a genuine individual and show up. And that's, that's way more than half the battle just showing up. Oh, yeah. Like, we gave out a scholarship, which is great. It, it does help somebody. But it's, again, it's only one scholarship. It helps one person as of now. Um, but if there are any other scholarships that do help our community, we are, we're always sharing it on, on our social media. It's like, hey, guys, if you can't really apply to our scholarship, there's a million more scholarships to go. Like, here you are. Have all the resources you need. Because it's, it's for pushing more than one person. It's for pushing a whole community. Oh, absolutely. And when I went to college back in, in 2010, I talked to the financial aid person and they were saying that scholarships is the biggest miss that most students do. They apply for FAFSA, they apply for Pell Grants, but that's it. And I asked him what kind of stats there are. He's like, there was $400 million left on the table last year because people just didn't look and apply for anything else. Yeah. All right, so you have your niche, but there's apps out there like Scully and FastWeb and scholarships.com. You go and you put in your details, and they just spit out all the answers for you. Say, this is what you qualify. Yeah. For, for a middle-aged white guy doing my master's, I qualified for 83 scholarships. That's, that's awesome, but like a lot of people don't know, and that's, that is a problem. That's a major yeah. problem. Just hop up, look, download scholarship apps, put in your, in your information. And see what comes up and then apply for them. If it looks like there was $400 million. A day. Yeah, in one a hour a day. Yeah. You've got Google Forms. You can just auto fill out most of these forms. Mm-hmm. You write two or three papers. People are like, you have to write 100 papers. You write two or three and you tweak it based on the scholarship you're applying yeah. for. You do four or five a day. You can do that in an hour. And at the end of the week, you've done 20 scholarship applications. Exactly. It's, it's not difficult. And at the end of the day, the worst that could happen is for them to say no. But that's not yeah. even the worst. It's already a no if you don't apply. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're just fighting for that yes. Just get that money. So you're currently in North Carolina. Do you have plans to expand to other states and other universities? Uh, so right now it is just a North Carolina-based nonprofit, but we are hoping to get it a little bit bigger. If you could get any single person or any single company on board to partner with you, who would that be? Any of the health departments in the North Carolina area, that would be amazing. I know North Carolina has got all the tobacco fields, so you've got all the tobacco companies. I don't know if you would or would not want their logo on your stuff. But one of the things I found with, with new nonprofits, especially, they're not willing to look at those bigger companies or someone that they think is a a celebrity is untouchable. And what usually happens is they never even message these individuals. They never even try to contact them because I know there is uh, superstars in the Latin community out there with big names and big ideas. Exactly. They're worth reaching out to. We had a post. It was for like Women's Month. And I did a post for Amara La Negra, which is, she's a really big singer. She fights for... Afro Latino rights because a lot of people say that she's not Latina or that she's not black and it's just like well you can be both but she fights for the rights so much. We did a post honoring her and she actually replied back and reposted the photo. And I'm such a big fan of her that I was just like starstruck. I woke up to check our social media with like hundreds of likes and follows. I'm like, oh no, what did we do? This is a scandal. What did I do wrong? And then I looked and it's because she reposted it. Isn't that wonderful that one simple comment, one simple reach out can get all the visibility you need, all the recognition you need, and all of that starts funneling into your organization to show what it is that you've got and what you're doing for your community. Like I said, the worst thing that could happen is, well, to get a no or just not to do it at all, like you said. I mean, just go for it. Take your shot. Talk to people. Apply to the big shark companies. I applied to many of the big ones. Many of these local ones, and, you know, if I get a no, that's fine. If I get a yes, that's fine as well. That's even better. (laughs) (laughs) It's one of those things, especially as as someone going door to door and asking, you know, for support or just showing up and showing who you are is we tend to take it personally. Like if I went door to door and talking about the nonprofit architect brand, I would feel like anything they said was directed at Travis, which it's not really true, right? It's directed at my brand. Right. But when I go 
you know, on behalf of a cause, on behalf of an organization. And you get a no, it's, it's not, it's not a no for you know, Juliana. It's a no for the Latinx life, or maybe it's not a, maybe it's a no right now, or maybe there's another way that can contribute just not monetarily. Yeah, right. Exactly. Maybe they'd be willing to hang a sign in their, their store saying that we support the Latinx life, even though they technically haven't given anything. Maybe providing food for our events. It could be so many things that you can give other than money. Volunteering. <laughs> yeah. Be a, ask people if they want to give their time, talent or treasure and what that might look like to them. But I know for one thing is people don't know how to support you unless you tell them how to support you. So when you've got social media posts and you're like, we're doing this great thing, how you can really impact and what we're really looking for today is if this story just impacts you, please just share this post, like, and share this post. And that's what I need from you today on a post tomorrow it might be, Hey, show your support by buying this sticker or this, you know, headband or this t-shirt. Uh, we would love to have you on board as a partner and help you show your support and spread our, our word. Or here is an article that just shows how the Latin community is being impacted in America due to this reason, that reason, or the other reason. I, I noticed for me, I, I haven't spent a dollar on advertising yet. And we were able to hit number four on iTunes last year, which was a big win. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. But what I have done is I've gone into other nonprofit groups and I've started answering questions and providing value for the people that need help in the arena that I'm good at. And what ends up happening is they end up asking for more. They want more assistance, more help, more direction. So I share with them my website. I share with them my group. I share with them my page. And before you know, people start liking my stuff without me even saying anything. They say, man, who is this guy and what does he do? And they click on my photo and it's got a banner of the nonprofit architect on there. My one feature photo, they click on that like, what is this thing? In the description, I write, I forget what I write. Some to the effect of, <laughs> you know, need help struggling with your nonprofit, go to my podcast, right? And here's the link, looking for a community to grow with and help answer your questions. Here's a link to my group. And people show up to my group without me inviting them and without doing anything. I'm just out there providing value, just being a solid citizen. And people were finding me that way. That's, that's amazing. I'm going to steal that page from your book and become a little more active in the nonprofit groups. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah. But for you, yeah. <laughs> for you, there's, there's a difference because you have the population that you're serving in the Latinx life, and then you have a different population that's looking to support that life. Exactly. Right. So you might have to find groups where they care about the Latin community and are looking to build the Latin community. So it may be nonprofit groups that help you a little bit, but it more likely is a Latin community where they care about the future, where they care about growth, where they care about education. And you can go in there and you can talk about your programs and eventually, you know, hop on maybe a Zoom chat like this if they're not in your local area and talk to them about what the Latinx life is or maybe how they can start a branch in their state or for their college and what that might look like to partner with you. That sounds like a goal that I'm, I'm going to have to write down. <laughs> And present in my next meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. Feel free to just, you know, go to your meeting and hit play on this episode. Uh, then you get all your team on the same page at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They're so excited. They're like, when is this podcast coming out? I'm like, I, you know, we've been hitting and missing with the holidays and everything. But I finally got you here. You finally got me here. And they're going to be so excited to listen to this. <laughs> what tell me the names of, of your team i want to hear all the other five names absolutely so you know my name <laughs> there is natalie there is esmeralda there is jesenia there's brooke and there's perla what a team sounds like a fantastic team they're awesome they really are they just i don't know i don't know how to explain it i guess because i am very biased they are very close friends of mine but i just think they're amazing ladies <laughs> So what's everyone's special skill? What do they all do for the board of the organization? So Natalie is a director. She basically organizes meetings. She does things that I don't want to do. <laughs> it, she works with me hand in hand with like sponsorships, working really hard on the 5K that's coming up that we're planning. Super excited for that. Um, Jasenia, she is um, basically just the 
secretary, making sure that all the documents are in order, making sure that we have paperless documents as well as, well as like uh, physical documents. Esmeralda is a treasurer, so she's the money holder. I'm always asking her for money for uh, any um, anything. Like we do little things where we might need to get a little bit of money involved for the Latinx Live. So I'm always messaging her like, hi, can I have $10, $15, please? I don't know, please. <laughs> Um, Perla and Brooke, they're both in charge of the workshop series that we're coming up with pretty soon. Uh, they're in charge of creating the PowerPoint presentations as well as making sure that it is fitted for the right age that we're presenting it to. And me, well, I'm the director of communications, so I do social media, reach out to people, emailing, uh, working on other hand in hand communications with the team, such as the 5k making sure that we're on track still a lot of things we're all very hands-on if somebody can't take something we really help out so it's a very flexible role the number one complaint i've been hearing over the last few weeks is i don't have enough engagement from my board so maybe we can help out a little bit i know nonprofits they you know if a lot of them volunteer their time so maybe they don't think that they should really speak out because it's just like volunteering the time. It does help to have maybe like friendly competitions. So for us, mm. um, the last time we talked, I started inviting all of my Facebook friends to like the Latinx Live. It worked really well. So I told the girls, I'm like, listen, we have two weeks. I want everybody to invite their friends. Whoever invites the most friends, I'll give you $25 out of my own pocket. Nice. You can get Starbucks, get lunch. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Get $25. Get engagement. And that really brought them in. It's just, it's not, it's not even about the money, but it's just that friendly competition. And I really saw a lot of positive engagement. It's like, oh my God, I have this many people liking today. I can't wait to invite more people. I'm like, go for it. Like, you're so, you're doing so good. You know, just friendly things. It's a hit and miss. Just keep, keep trying different things until one thing works. That's important. You got to keep trying things. I've got a few friends that they do these crazy email campaigns for building their following. They'll say, whoever can get the most followers and will get a free t-shirt or free swag or a free mug or whatever the free thing is. Yeah. You'll get one for you as the person inviting and then a random person that you invite will also get a free t-shirt. So what do you want the Latinx life to look like in five years? Oh, that's such an exciting question. <laughs> I, I really want us to grow to give out more than just one scholarship. And I really want to, I really want people mostly to come up to us and be like, you really changed me this way. Like, or you really changed like my family member or like my friend just really want to see a difference in our community. That's wonderful. You know, how can me and my team or my listeners help impact your mission? Follow us on Facebook. You can check out our website and see like all the events that we've done and like all the fun things we have planned coming up. Listen to our mission. And if you really believe in it, follow us, share it with other people. That'll, um, that'll be greatly appreciated. That's fantastic, Juliana. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Always wonderful to speak when we can. Yes, I agree. Thank you so much for having me. This was such an awesome conversation. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to The Nonprofit Architect. To listen to all our past shows, visit http colon forward slash forward slash nonprofitarchitect.org. And be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our show. Thank you. Thank you.